Welcome back guys to another video. In this video, I will be recreating my favorite fighter jet ever, the F-35 Lightning II made by Lockheed Martin. The F-35 II is my favorite for a number of reasons, but most notably that it is a VTOL fighter jet. So just it is kin with the um, Aviate Sea Harrier, um, the, which has VTOL capabilities as well. It is capable of VTOL for, because it has a lift fan in the front and it has its rear um, turbo fan in the back swivel down using a technology known as the three bearing swivel nozzle which rotates three different bearings to rotate down the nozzle so like you have these all these different bearings moving different directions which then makes the it um, pushes the nozzle of the engine either up or down, so that allows it to give get VTOL capabilities. We'll also have um, horizontal flight, still with a horizontally fixed engine. So, yeah, that is very cool, and that's one of the main reasons why it's my favorite fighter jet, just for that reason alone. But in addition, we also have the fact that it just, it looks really cool. And so, this, the X, the F-35, originally known as the X-35, was a, it was developed in something known as the Joint Strike Fighter Program, which is a fighter jet program. It is a competition between Lockheed Martin and Boeing to get the Joint Strike Fighter contract with the US government, which means that whoever get whoever gets it develops the Joint Strike Fighter, which, and in this case, it was Lockheed Martin and Boeing. Lockheed Martin won because they got this. Now, Boeing put forward their X-32, and that thing looks ugly. So I'll put two pictures on screen now. You can see which one you like. Just know that I do not like the Boeing one, and, um, yeah, like, I'm sorry if you work at Boeing or whatever, or if you like Boeing, but it's really ugly, so, yeah, right now, I'm just building this sort of fuselage, I've built some custom intakes with, um, something in them, call or something called the divertless supersonic inlet or intake whatever which one you want to call it intake inlet it doesn't really matter it is preventing the the divertless supersonic intake prevents the skin layer of slow moving um air it prevents that from interfering with the engine performance um because the skin layer there's a um slow moving layer of air around of around fighter jets and so this will compromise engine um engine effectiveness so there's a little bump in the center of the intake to sort of make it, the air coming in a bit more concentrated at least that's how it works in my understanding it might not work exactly that way but that's how it works generally in my mind. Now there is an analog in KSP for the divertless supersonic intake or inlet. It's called the divertless supersonic intake. Um, I will be building that in just a bit. It's not yet fully constructed. It um I there is something there is a part a Mark One part. Yeah, see I put an air break in. There's a Mark One part. This called the divertless supersonic intake and it has a hump in the middle except it would not work for my purposes because it does not have the right shaped intake and it also I would have to clip them in and the lift fan is right where I would would like them to be so in overall it wasn't the best choice for me so in the end I didn't use it and instead I just put an air brake there and deactivated all of its controls so yeah now, another really cool technology in the F-35 is the um, the phased array antenna. Inside the nose cone of the real F-35, there is a massive phased array antenna, which means that it can, like, by using destructive interference by things with opposite 180-degree um, rotated wavelengths, it can destructively aim 
it like radar beam at different objects so if you have multiple is facing multiple uh, different fighter jets or if the fighter jet it's facing is not directly in front of it it will not it can it can target that fighter jet and indeed those different fighter jets and it can um receive their like radar signature instead of just having a fixed beam which just shoots a, like a beacon straight forward so yeah one of the great advantages now there are a couple other things that i'm not going to talk about such as the um what else there's hmm, there's a hud in the pilot's helmet like really cool displays what uh, uh, the plane sees from outside so gives you a much better spatial awareness and stuff there's a couple like really cool fe other features but if you want to learn more about the f-35 B, you should go check out Real Engineering's um, um, documentary, I'd describe it as. Yeah, go check out their documentary. It's really, really, really cool. Um, it's explaining the F-35 and how it works and all that really cool stuff. And I really, I personally took so many notes for this video from that video. So go give them a bit of love if you haven't found that. Check them out. They're really, really, really good YouTube channel <sighs> now one thing that i have not mentioned is that there are actually three variants to the f-35 the f-35a b and c the f-35a is conventional takeoff just run straight down a runway take off you know fly around and then horizontally land all that kind of good stuff normal takeoff and landing now the f-35b that is what i built it has v or it uh, does not have VTOL capabilities it has stovl capabilities this means short takeoff and landing now this means that it tilts the nozzle down at like about 45 degrees and opens and turns on the lift fan so that it can then take off in a decreased amount of space such as on a short deck on an aircraft carrier which this is very good for the marines as the joint strike fighter program was to make one fighter jet for all now pretty much done we're launching yeah the f-35c is just a carrier-based aircraft um yeah just a carrier-based aircraft it has a couple of it has a bit more wing spray space and its wingtips fold up so i will put a picture on screen now for just a bit uh, what they look like all in and in comparison to their like replacement the things that they're replacing so yeah now yeah you can see up here on the screen fairly standard gravity turn um nothing special about this i suggest not watching me and taking notes off of what i do to get anywhere in kerbal because i just what i do i i'm not good at interplanetary transfers at all like i mean i did get one but like i before i started this youtube channel i had never done one before so yeah i had never done one before and then i was like hey how cool would it be to go to duna and then i did and then i was like hey what about dress dress is really cool that's like the worst planet so i'm going there and i'm gonna make a hotel on it and yeah, so I learned how the most efficient ways and times to do transfer windows, and it was really, really, yeah, just, yeah, just don't follow what I'm doing. So, yeah. In, well, one crazy fact about the lift van on the F-35, if you, you may not know this, it was built by... A famous car company Rolls Royce now like all those fancy cars you see Rolls Royce not they built this like the lift fan and the swivel engine all that cool stuff and they they built it so for the lift fan instead of using propeller blades I use Juno engines and Juno engines I use them for one reason and that reason is because um they can show 
the center of thrust readout or center yeah center of thrust readout so I can align the center of thrust under the center of mass versus where um you cannot see that with propellers because those are lift surfaces and not actual thrust surfaces so it would have taken a great deal more time and this project already has taken up to a month so yeah that was a bit annoying yeah now i made a bit of an oopsie coming into jewel as you can see now i sort of maybe have a um encounter below its surface so now i'm ex executing a little maneuver just to get my periapsis above jewel's atmosphere which is in case you didn't know 200,000 meters um yeah Yes, yeah, I'm just getting a fairly standard Leith encounter. Actually, the first time I've ever been to Leith. As I mentioned, I already, I'm bad at interplanetary transfers and that, all, all that stuff. Now, what I have on this, I have three different things. I have a mining probe, which will go down first. Then I have a comsat hub, which will give make it so that I can control everything. Like, in case I don't have a Kerbal on board the um, mining thing, which I'm now landing. In case I don't have a Kerbal on that, I just... Yeah. In case I don't have a Kerbal on that, which I don't, as you can probably see, I need some way to control it. So that's why I have that Comsat hub. Now, we did explode a bit on the way in. That was a solar panel. Um, not necessary, because we have three other solar panels and an RTG. So, in the end, we... Um, everything worked out what i forgot to do is actually deploy my parachutes before we got too far so that was kind of annoying and i was yeah pretty good landing no explosions jettison the heat shield boom and yeah now we go back up and we are at the fighter jet the f-35 the main part of this video and so gonna be deorbiting it and then we're just gonna fly in now the hard part was getting the mining rig down there that took me about 10 attempts once i got the mining rig down there it was fairly easy after that because f-35 it has enough fuel to get it pretty much anywhere so i mean not anywhere but it was able to get it if i have a pretty close encounter i can glide and fly a bit i a bit exploded that wasn't that bad for me because it was only the RTG in the nose cone which was yeah don't really need that although I might need it but not really you don't really need reaction wheels on this thing you oh yeah yeah you don't really need reaction wheels on this thing the only problem that might arise from this is that it, it will eventually lose all of its electric charge that w is needed for um, the like for transferring between VTOL and normal flight, you know, that stuff with hinges, that's what, or not hinges, um, servos, that's what I just realized just now, actually. But, um, yeah, just gliding over there, um, yeah. Yeah, as what I, what's really great about the F 35, it's, well, it's really great for this scenario. Because it is, it's great for um, a scouting mission to Lathe, which is what I, this is. Um, it's great for a scouting mission to Lathe because Lathe has very little wa like surface area that is actually land. The re most of it is water. So if you have like a very small island, I know I'm at a big island right now, but if I had a, we're at a small island, for example, I would need, a, I would have absolutely no space for a runway. So like to take off and land so therefore it's very useful because you can use the VTOL or STOVL on it um, and that'll be really helpful because you can just sort of hover over the island and just slowly descend and yeah good everything now we've got down here and we're just gonna go up to the mining rig now you might notice a message in the message not message 
message in the top of the screen that says not enough fuel or not enough resource like proximity I'm, whatever it says it's something about the ore and it says that there's not enough um ore in the area for the mining rig to work so it's pretty much just stranded here we have not we have a bit of fuel but not that much now i messed up a vtol over there but i guess i should not really have been trying for vtol because that actually isn't what the, it, the actual plane does so i will have a vtol flight and then later on i will do a textbook what you should do and what you should fly how you should fly so yeah a couple failed attempts later i get vtol and then I get a cut, and then a lot of failed attempts later that have been cut out of a video. I've got my textbook STOVL um, takeoff and landing, and that's that was fun. Yeah, so here we're just flying. Yeah, nice steady flight, and then yeah, we got some flares. Yeah, include a firework launcher down there because I just thought that fl the idea of flares was really cool. Like, look at that. That's really nice. Now, the footage here is even sped up for you guys. This is how it sh probably should be, the frame rate for my computer. It just was really laggy. I might have, yeah, at this point, I might have had Premiere Pro open, actually. So, I could have been using a lot of my graphics, like power so aha we are here we are ready for the textbook landing as our nice kerbal goes to the cockpit we are ready for the maiden flight the maiden textbook flight i might add now there are a bit of roll problems because the afterburner the turbofan the panther it always wants to correct for roll, so I just had to turn off its actuation um, toggle. I think that's what it's called for the Panther. And yeah, we're in the air, so yeah, much less of a swivel. I could have decreased the swivel speed for the um, nozzle, but that would have just been a bit of that would have made it a bit of a pain. Like originally, it was five seconds. I could have gone for a slightly longer time, but I think. Five seconds was really, really slow, and you can't emergency transfer out without... Yeah, you cannot, so... Here we go. Nice, beautiful textbook landing. Don't hate me in the comments down below for it. Okay, I guess that's pretty much the end of the video. Um, yeah, here we go, back on Kerbin. And beautiful VTOL and flight away um yeah this video just took so long to make so i if you really like if you like this content please consider to like and comment in the video's description and all that good stuff and if you really like this content and you want to see more maybe consider subscribing because it just helps out a ton this video was so long in the making really would appreciate it so yeah See you in the next video. Goodbye.